What do you think? I think it's like a wax museum with a pulse. Hi, I'm Buddy. What can I get you? Let's see. Steak, steak, steak. Oh, yeah, oh, there's Douglas Sirk steak. Have that. How do you want that cooked? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell? Bloody as hell and, oh, yeah, look at this. Vanilla Coke. What about you, Peggy Sue? I'll have the... Durward Kirby Burger, bloody, and a five dollar shake. Hey, with that shake, Martin and Lewis or Amos and Andy? Martin and Lewis. Did you just order a five dollar shake? Mm-hmm. That's a shake. That's milk and ice cream. Last I heard. That's five dollars. You don't put bourbon in or nothing? No. Just checking. I'll be right back with your drinks. Could you, um, roll me one of those, cowboy? You can have this one, cowgirl. Thanks. Think nothing of it. So, Marsala said you just got back from Amsterdam. Sure did. How long were you there? Just over three years. I go there about once a year to chill out for a month. No kidding. I didn't know that. Why would you? I heard you did a pilot. That was my 15 minutes. What was it? It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? Fox Force 5. Fox is in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force is in we're a force to be reckoned with. And five is in there's one, two, three, four, five of us. There was a blonde one, Somerset O'Neill. She was a leader. The Japanese fox was a kung fu master. The black girl was a demolition expert. French fox's speciality was sex. What was your specialty? Knives. The character I played, Raven McCoy, her background was she grew up raised by circus performers. According to the show, she was the deadliest woman in the world with a knife. And she knew a zillion old jokes her grandfather, an old vaudevillian, taught her. And if we would have got picked up, they would have worked in a gimmick where every show I would have told another joke. You know any animal jokes? Well, I only got the chance to say one, because we only did one show. Tell me. It's corny. Don't be that way. Tell me. No, you wouldn't like it, and I'd be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed. You told, like, 50 million people, and you can't tell me? I promise I won't laugh. That's what I'm afraid of, Vince. That's not what I meant. You know it. Well, now I'm definitely not going to tell you, because it's been built up too much. <sighs> what a jip. Martin and Lewis. Vanilla Coke. Mm. Yummy. You think I could have a sip of that? Be my guest. I gotta know what a five dollar shake tastes like. You can use my straw. I don't have cooties. Yeah, but maybe I do. Cooties I can handle. All right. God damn, it's a pretty fucking good milkshake. Told you. I don't know if it was worth five dollars. It was pretty fucking good.
Don't you hate that? Hate what? Uncomfortable silences. Why do we feel it's necessary to yak about bullshit in order to be comfortable? I don't know. That's a good question. That's when you know you found somebody really special. And you can just shut the fuck up for a minute and comfortably share silence. Well, I don't think we're quite there yet, but don't feel bad. We just met each other. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and powder my nose. And you sit here and think of something to say. I'll do that. Don't you just love it when you come back from the bathroom to find your food waiting for you? We're lucky we got anything at all. I don't think Buddy Holly's much of a waiter. Maybe we should have sat in Mount Monroe section. Would you like some coffee? Which one? There's two Monroes. No, there's not. That is Mount Monroe. That is Mamie Van Doren. And I don't see Jenny Mansfield. So she must have a night off or something. Pretty smart. Yeah, I got my moments. So do you think of something to say? Actually, I did. However, you seem like a really nice person, and I, I don't want to offend you. Ooh. This doesn't sound like the usual mindless, boring, getting to know you chit-chat. This sounds like you actually have something to say. Well, well, I do, I do. But you have to promise not to be offended. No, 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 no. You can't promise something like that. I have no idea what you're going to ask me. So you can go ahead and ask me what you're going to ask me. And my natural response could be to get offended. But then through no fault of my own, I would have broken my promise. Let's just forget it. That's an impossibility. Trying to forget anything as intriguing as this would be an exercise in futility. Is that a fact? And besides, isn't it more uh, exciting when you don't have permission? All right, all right. Well, here it goes. Uh, what did you uh, think about what happened to Antoine? Who's Antoine? Tony Rocky Horror. You know him. Fell out of a window. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that is one way to say it. Another way to say it would be that he was thrown out. Another way would be was he was thrown out by Marcellus. And yet even another way is to say he was thrown out of a window by Marcellus because of you. Is that a fact? No, no, it's not a fact. It's just what I heard. It's just what I heard. Who told you? They. They talk a lot, don't they? <laughs> they certainly do. They certainly do. Don't be shy, Vincent. What else did they say? Well, I'm not, I'm not shy. Um, did it involve the F word? No, 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 no. They just said that Antoine had given you a foot massage. And? And, no, and nothing. That's it. You heard Marsalis through Tony Rocky Horror at a four-story window for giving me a foot massage? Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, I mean, at the time I was told it sounded reasonable. Marsalis throwing Tony out of a four-story window for massaging my feet seemed reasonable? No, it seemed excessive, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. I mean, I understand that Marsalis is very, very protective of you. A husband being protective of his wife is one thing. Husband almost killing another man for touching his wife's feet is something else. But did it happen? Only thing Antoine ever touched in mine was my hand when he shook it. At my wedding. Really? The truth is, nobody knows why Marsalis threw Tony out of that four story window except Marsalis and Tony. When you little scamps get together, you're worse than a sewing circle. Ladies and gentlemen, now the moment you've all been waiting for, it's a world famous. Jack Rabbit Slim's Twist Contest. Now this is where one lucky couple will win this handsome trophy that Marilyn here is holding. Now who will be our first contestants? Right here. Want to dance? No, 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 no. I do believe Marsalis, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. And now I want to dance, I want to win, I want that trophy. 
All so right. dance good. All right. I'm here for our first <laughs> Now let's meet our first contestants here this evening. Young lady, what is your name? Mrs. Mia Wallace. And uh, how about your fella here? Vincent Vega. All right, let's see what you can do. Take it away. a teenage wedding and the old folks wished him well You could see that Pierre did truly love the mademoiselle And now the young monsieur and madame have rung the chapel bell C'est la vie, c'est the old folks It goes to show you never can tell They furnished off an apartment with a two-room robot sale found work, the little money coming worked out well. C'est la vie, c'est the old folks, the culture show you never can tell. They had a high five phone, oh boy, did they let it blast. Seven hundred little records, all rock, rhythm, and jazz. But when the sun went down, the rapid tempo of the music fell. C'est la vie, c'est the old folks It goes to show you never can tell They bought a souped up chitney Was a cherry red 53 And drove it down to Orleans To celebrate the anniversary It was there where Pierre Was wedded to the lovely mademoiselle C'est la vie, c'est the old folks It goes to show you never can tell